Solar panels are not a new technology. In fact, the original solar panels were being developed in the late 1800s. But until recently, solar-powered cars seemed more like a fantasy than reality. However, what seemed like fantasy before is now going to become a reality because there are three companies that aim to produce solar-powered electric vehicles sometime in 2022. So let's dive into the details of these three solar-powered electric vehicles. Obviously, you can install solar panels on your home or your business and use that electricity to charge an electric vehicle. And while this does indeed allow you to drive an electric vehicle with power harnessed from the sun, technically solar power, having actual solar panels built into the vehicle really takes this to a whole new level. The thought of solar panels adding range to your electric vehicle while it is parked without having to be plugged in or even while driving down the road on a sunny day is quite exciting. However, before I dive into the details of the three electric vehicles that I want to talk about in this video, I want to talk about the reasons why I believe solar powered electric vehicles have not been common already. Because when you think about it, an electric vehicle and solar panels, why would somebody not put these two together before now? This seems kind of like a no brainer. Besides the problem of having to engineer solar panels into an electric vehicle, there are some technical reasons why I believe solar panels are not common on electric vehicles right now. Even the best commercially available solar panels being sold today have an efficiency under 23%, meaning only 23% of the sun's energy hitting that panel will be converted into electricity. Because of this, a larger surface area on the electric vehicle is needed to be able to house enough solar panels to add a meaningful amount of charge to that electric vehicle. And this leads me to the next technical issue that I want to talk about, and this is the issue of available surface area on an electric vehicle. The surface area on a vehicle that can house solar panels is not very large. Because of this, in order for the solar panels on an electric vehicle to provide more than a token amount of actual range, the electric vehicle needs to be extremely efficient, thus leading to the third technical issue, and that's the issue of EV efficiency. Even if the entire glass roof of the Tesla Model 3 were covered in solar panels, it would really only add a small amount of range in eight hours of sunlight, partially due to the fact that although it's extremely efficient, even more efficiency is needed from an electric vehicle in order to add meaningful amounts of range. And the electric vehicles that we're going to talk about, two of the three are extremely efficient, even more efficient than the Tesla Model 3. So with all that being said, let's now dive into the details of these three electric vehicles that will be equipped with solar panels and should be available sometime in 2022. If you're excited about driving a vehicle with solar panels built in, then you want to stick around for the rest of this video. The first solar powered electric vehicle that I want to talk about comes from an EV startup based in the Netherlands called Lightyear. If you live in the European Union, Norway, or Switzerland, you can now reserve the Lightyear One with deliveries scheduled to begin in the summer of 2022. The initial production of their exclusive Pioneer Edition will only include 946 cars, but I assume future runs of the vehicle will be at a much greater scale. According to Lightyear, with a fully charged battery, Lightyear One range is 725 kilometers, which is around 450 miles on the WLTP drive cycle. A range of over 700 kilometers and over 400 miles, of course, makes this a very practical electric vehicle that could be a good daily driver. The Lightyear One is also large enough to comfortably seat five passengers and includes around 780 liters or 27.5 cubic feet of cargo space, even with passengers in the vehicle. When it comes to the powertrain, the Lightyear One has four independently controlled in-wheel motors, which they say make up a 97% efficient powertrain and only requires 83 watt hours per kilometer, according to the WLTP test cycle. This kind of extreme efficiency allows the Lightyear One to extract the maximum amount of mileage from the amount of watt hours gained from the sun. As an example, here's how this efficiency compares to the Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus. The Model 3 Standard Range Plus, according to the WLTP test cycle, consumes around 140 watt hours per kilometer. So with that comparison, you can see just how efficient and impressive the Lightyear One should be according to their claims. 
When it comes to drag coefficient, which is another important metric that determines a vehicle's efficiency, they mention Lightyear 1's design allows it to attain a record-breaking drag coefficient of less than 0.20. For context, the Lightyear 1 should be slightly more aerodynamic than the very impressive newly refreshed Tesla Model S, which boasts a drag coefficient of just 0.208. When it comes to the solar panels themselves, Lightyear mentions that the vehicle is equipped with 5 square meters of solar panels and that the patented double curved solar array achieves 215 watts per meter squared. So by doing a little math, in total the Lightyear 1 has just over a 1 kilowatt solar system built into the vehicle, which is actually quite impressive. When it comes to the exterior vehicle size, the Lightyear 1 should be approximately the same size as the Tesla Model S, so it is a practical full-size sedan. As you can see on the side-by-side -side chart, the Lightyear 1 and the Tesla Model S when it comes to the length, width, and height are actually quite close. When it comes to charging speeds for the Lightyear 1, they mention you should be able to gain around 12 kilometers per hour from the solar panels, and on a 60 kilowatt fast charger, you should be able to gain around 570 kilometers per hour. The interior of the vehicle appears very clean, spacious, and well-designed. And when it comes to the general features, it will be capable, as they mention, of over-the-air software updates, will include Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and should have a wireless charging pad for your phone or other devices. The Lightyear 1 does have a cost though of 150,000 euros, but it does have a nice long range and some really impressive specs, so I believe it's still a really exciting vehicle. As of the recording of this video, reservations are still open for the first Pioneer edition of the Lightyear 1. However, do be aware that you have to put down the full 150,000 euros in order to reserve this vehicle. The second solar powered car I would like to discuss comes from a company called Aptera, which is an EV startup based out of San Diego, California. Aptera has designed a very unique looking three wheeled electric vehicle with up to a 1000 mile range. While the three wheeled Aptera may not have as much room as the full size Lightyear One sedan that we just talked about, this two seater still offers 25 cubic feet of rear storage space which makes it practical enough for people who only need a car that can hold two passengers. The Aptera is also priced very affordably as well, with the base model costing under $26,000, with around 250 miles of estimated range, and the top-end 1,000-mile range version has a base price of just under $45,000. In between the low end and the high end, they're also going to offer a 400 and a 600 mile range Aptera as well. When it comes to the size of the Aptera, as you can see on this chart, here's how the dimensions compare to the Tesla Model 3. When it comes to length, the Aptera is smaller than the Model 3, but it's not quite as small as it may look. Also, due to its aircraft-inspired design, it has a drag coefficient of just 0.13, which makes it the most aerodynamic electric vehicle yet. The Aptera should only consume around 100 watt-hours per mile, whereas the Tesla Model 3 consumes closer to 240 watt-hours per mile, according to the EPA test cycle. The efficiency number of around 100 watt-hours per mile that the Aptera should consume is even greater than the Lightyear one that we mentioned a little bit ago. And when you look at the actual watt-hours per mile, we talked about watt-hours per kilometer a little bit ago, but when you think about the watt-hours per mile for the Lightyear one, that number is around 130 watt-hours per mile. When it comes to solar panels, the Aptera can be equipped with a 700 watt system covering up to three square meters. And Aptera claims that this 700 watt system is capable of adding 40 miles of solar powered driving per day. Included in the base price are solar panels on the roof and the dash of the vehicle, but in order to get the maximum 700 watt system, it costs an extra $900 to add solar panels to the front hood and the rear hatch. If you need to charge your Aptera beyond what the solar panels can add, Aptera mentions that if connected to a 110 volt outlet, it adds around 13 miles per hour, or around a 150 mile charge overnight. And on a fast charger, it should be able to add around 100 miles in a 10 minute charge. 
When it comes to availability, besides being available in the USA, Aptera states on their website, quote, our goal is to sell Aptera worldwide everywhere possible. When it comes to delivery timing, on Aptera's website, they mention that they are planning to scale production and begin deliveries of our first Paradigm Edition vehicles in early 2022. If you're interested in reserving an Aptera, you can do so on their website right now for just $100. Overall, the Aptera is very unique, offers a surprising amount of room, and has a clean, modern interior that reminds me of a Tesla Model 3. With its low price, long range, and solar panel options, it seems like a great electric vehicle that would be a lot of fun to own. The next solar powered electric vehicle that I want to discuss is one that you're probably well aware of, and that's the Tesla Cybertruck. Back in April of 2019, Elon Musk replied to a question about a potential solar powered tonneau cover for the Cybertruck with the following, will be an option to add solar power that generates 15 miles per day, possibly more. Would love this to be self powered. Adding fold-out solar wings would generate 30 to 40 miles per day. Average miles per day in U.S. is 30. Thankfully, though, we have more than just this tweet from Elon Musk. In May of this year, Tesla did indeed file a patent application that describes a solar-powered tonneau cover that will apparently be an option on the Cybertruck. Here's a quote from Tesla's patent application, wherein the truck bed cover comprises a plurality of solar electric cells that are electrically connected to the battery pack, and wherein the plurality of solar electric cells on the truck bed cover in a closed position is configured to recharge the battery pack. Being able to add around 15 miles or more of free range from the sun with your Tesla Cybertruck will be quite impressive, especially for such a large vehicle, and it could be really useful. For most people, 15 miles per day will not be enough to eliminate the need to charge the Cybertruck, but it should help at least reduce the amount of charging you do need to do. And if your Cybertruck were parked in a sunny location while you were away, say on like vacation or something, it would eliminate the phantom drain that all EVs face and could actually let you come home to a full charge all from the sun. When it comes to availability, Tesla recently pushed back the delivery timeline of the Cybertruck, and now production is supposed to happen sometime in late 2022, with volume production of the Cybertruck beginning in 2023. You can still go to Tesla's website right now and reserve a Cybertruck. However, do be aware that there are an estimated 1 million plus reservations for the truck, so you will have to wait quite a bit of time if you go and reserve one right now. But if you want one, I would get in line. Do let me know what you think about the three solar powered electric vehicles that I mentioned in this video. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. Also, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. I'd like to take a moment now to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you so much.